Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today we're going to be checking out this extremely affordable x86 SBC called UD2X1. So let's get started. Now I do want to thank Yu Yi Tu for sending this over to me for review and everything we talk about will be linked down in the description below. Now Yu Yi Tu is a company that was established in 2012 specializing in R&D and manufacturing both hardware and software for IoT. I myself haven't heard of this company until recently because of this uh, Yu Yi Tu X1 SBC board so it piqued my interest. Now I'm very excited to be checking this out. I actually waited a few months for this so when I saw this pop up on my feed I reached out to them right away just to see if I could get one but they were still in development until October so right Right around now. Now this hardware is essentially found in most home and small office NAS. Most of the NAS that I reviewed here on this channel uses a CPU combo of 4 gigs of RAM. Now this board has Intel Celeron N5105 4 cores with a base frequency of 2 GHz and turbo boost to 2.9. It's got 10 watt TDP and a support for DDR4 or 8 or 16 gigs of RAM. In addition, you can get this board with eMMC either for 64, 128 or 256 storage. The board I currently have is 8 GB 128 for 139. Now the board itself has a bunch of connections uh, starting with two USB 3.0s, two USB 2.0s and a gigabit ethernet connector. And on the opposite side, you have that power button, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, HDMI, LED lights, and a barrel connector. Now on one side, you have the fan pin, GPIO, SPI, I2C, UARTs, and then USB pinouts. Now on the opposite side of that, you have the micro SD, micro HDMI, and a microphone. Now on the bottom, you have the MIPI DSI, a SATA cable, uh, M.2 NVMe and M.2 E key for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Overall size of this is 115 by 75 millimeter. Now it came shipped with Windows 10 but it's not licensed but you can install any operating system you want and I personally will be using something like this with Linux or if you want to set up something with NAS maybe TrueNAS or Unraid and no you cannot boot from SD. Now I also want to mention about the BIOS. The BIOS is unlocked and there are so many options in there that will make your head spin. Uh, the one of my favorite options is the PL1 which allows you to adjust the TDP from 10 watts stock all the way up to 18 watts give or take. So it gives you a little bit of boosted performance. You can also get this with a 7 inch touchscreen display and a resolution of 1024 by 600 at 75 hertz refresh rate. It's extremely clear and very responsive to the touch and it works right off the MIPI DSi port. Now, the CPU benchmark using Cinebench R20 is 817, which what I got tested with. And it's about 20% slower than the Intel N95 that we recently reviewed. Now, the read and write speed for the onboard eMMC is 287 for read and 169 for write. Now, you can operate the GPIO pins from within Windows or Linux. They do have a sample software that you could use. And technically, you only get five GPIOs because one becomes ground. So you got to use your GPIOs very wisely. But they do have an expansion board that you could connect to the UART. Now, while this is still a development board, there are plenty of things that you could do with it. Like you can add the optional SATA connector on there and add a, a storage or use the M.2 NVMe for more storage or use the M.2 NVMe with a PCIe to connect other stuff like a 10 gigabit ethernet or whatever. You also have the E key that you could use like 4G, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, whatever you want. Personally, this is a perfect candidate for building a NAS. The hardware is the same as most NASs you find these days with the price tag being very reasonable. Now, I also did design a simple NAS case that will allow you to vertically mount the SBCs like this or Raspberry Pi along with two 3.5 inch hard drives. Now there are a few dev boards out there that use the CPUs like this like the Latte Panda Delta or the Odroid H3 and uh, the Intel board called the Alex board. And what's interesting about that is they talk about OpenVINO toolkit which is made for AI. Now using the OpenVINO they were able to even run stuff like stable diffusion or object recognition. Alright so here's the desktop that it comes shipped with. Like I said before it's Windows 10 but it's unregistered. It actually works intended. I'm going to jump into the browser and it loads right away. Everything works pretty good. So I'm going to do a Bing search of UE2. Check out their website. Again, everything loads pretty quick like a normal desktop should. Uh, they actually have a pretty good uh, wiki. So if you're looking for documentation on this board, they actually have a pretty good complete set of stuff. So let me head over to wiki. Um, go down to see they have different boards. This is I heard about this board from this company when it first came out a couple of months ago. And then I was I saw this board and I got really interested. So that's the board we're going to be checking out. 
And if you scroll down a bit, you do see like they have everything written down. And if you are interested in learning how to use the GPIOs, uh, they have um, BIOSes, drivers, everything you need basically to get this board up and running. So if you wipe it out and want to install Windows 11 or something else, you have drivers for it. And if you're thinking you can't get anything working in Windows, they do have like little applications over here. So like the GPIO, I'm gonna jump into here. I'll tell you the operations. I'll tell you what pins are what. So technically you got five GPIOs, one ground, so it's six. And then they have the description of each. Uh, they even come with a little software with source code if you wanna play around within Windows to get GPIO working. And uh, I'm gonna check out this program right now. This is the little software that it comes with, which is a uh, GPIO LED test, which, which basically sends highs and lows to the GPIO pins. And if you're not familiar with which one goes with which, again, they have the description right over here. So I'm gonna play around with uh, GPIO H00, which is the last pin. And I have this little ring light. That's the only LED I currently have. And I'm gonna use this software basically to set the output mode and then turn it off and then turn it back on and you could see it's actually working. So it, right through Windows and they come with the source, uh, source code. So you could actually uh, play around with the GPIOs through Windows. Most of the time I'm used to using Linux, um, running a Python program to set GPIOs, but this is pretty cool. Now checking out YouTube videos, we have this little aquarium that I played earlier and it does play pretty well. I'm gonna maximize this. Uh, stats for nerds. Uh, it's running about 720 right now. And let's see if I could change this. HD, switch this over to 4K. You might get some drop frames, but yeah, it's very clear. It works very well for a CPU that's like this. I'm surprised. Here we are testing Linux and we are on Linux Mint and it actually is very, very responsive. Now I'm gonna jump over to Firefox and head back into their website, which is uh, UE2X1, and let's see, that comes up. Now, as far as their lineup goes, they have a four gigabyte model with no eMMC, eight gigabyte with no eMMC, which is the one I would kind of recommend because you could use NVMe. Uh, they have the 16 gigabyte, and then the, with eMMC, you have the four gigabyte, and the version that I'm using, which is this one, Actually, not this one, this one. It's $139.99 for eight gigabyte with 128 gigabyte storage, which is still not a bad price. If you want to max out, it's 219 and you get a 256 or either 16 gig with no eMMC. So realistically, I think it's priced at a very good price, especially if you need something like four gigs or eight gigs just to get by. Now, a lot of NAS is used just four gigabytes for their storage. So that might be something you want to look into if you're setting up a simple NAS. Now here, I'm going to jump into a few games. Uh, the first one we have is Dead Cells. It actually plays very well. I couldn't get Mango HUD working at this particular moment. I don't know why. Uh, maybe something changed between the Flat Hub versions, but yeah, it plays pretty well. It's actually very smooth. And games like this style, uh, pixelated and everything like Cuphead or this game uh, should play very very well. Now jumping into another game that's a little bit more intensive which is Valheim. Now Valheim only runs around 20 frames per second. I did test both the standard version and the OpenGL and they both run around the same frame rates but I couldn't get anything above 20 frames. I turned down all the settings everything's off to the lowest setting possible and it still only runs around this rate. Either way, whether you're planning to build a tiny home lab or use this as a dev board, you can't really beat the price. But if you really want to see more graphical performance like this, you can check out ETA Prime's video where he does um, a bunch of games and also emulation. So yeah, you could check that out on his channel. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. I will be running this board because they're sending me more stuff with this, which is the PoE adapter and the SATA connector. So I'm gonna be revisiting this board soon once I get those products in because I want to be able to test the SATA port. The ribbon cable with the SATA, I don't know how much data it could transfer. I just want to play around with that. Anyway, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And then say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.